At the time of recording this, my latest Aesop Rock video hit 60 views. That is insane. That is a ton of views. So I feel bad for you YouTube startups, you smaller channels, but you know, we all gotta pay our dues. So this video comes as a request from a viewer whose name of, oh, eludes me right now. <laughs> we are going to look at Dry Spell by Aesop Rock and figure out what the hell Aesop Rock is talking about. I've listened to the song several times since my last upload. I figured that if Aesop Rock is who we're gonna be talking about, we might as well kind of brush up on the material because there ain't no fucking way I'm gonna understand it by reacting blindly. It ain't gonna happen. So here's Dry Spell. We're gonna let him rattle off the lyrics and then we're gonna go into it. On a sunny afternoon in Lower East Side, New York, The burgundy halo trimming the tunnels end or bend with tenants spangled across a more tangible premise. Yeah. The splendor shimmy splinters all up in day trip of visuals. Take it easy, man. Fuck it, I'll take it anywhere I can. My palms are gym rest when I witness fury scurry past my window. Model city in a bottle, plugged hostile. It's bliskers and pollutants and a billion suckers puckering a vibe. Maybe the sucker ship is the oh, treasure. But they insist it, man. I'm trying to spin me dizzy, sponging up the given dungeon functions as opposed to art historians absorbed inside of some everybody. Cup your knuckles when the spout divorce is vertical Marveling at the spite with which it curdled Outside my tenement coats a little warm from out the mug of masons Wasted laying bricks for days to later find they own a lot of Jason Mark the blasphemy, elements of elegance and savagery Murder the gossip, fuck it, run off happily Broken spoke, cyclists choking open Dr. Zayas Born fetus in a matchbox, keylessly padlocked to hammer face Now these impurities embedded in fiber litter is textiles shedded in the hail tailored to motivate Behind his splendid leverage, now I'm drowning in a pool of Why are you here? here? Sabotage with my beast of bird impertinence if I die this uh, year. Dear. I'm positive I know this language. It sounds like, based on everything we're reading in the first verse, it sounds like he woke up and he's ready to have a bad day. I'm thinking with these lines particularly, he's in his apartment looking out on the city. Maybe it's his day off. Maybe he's unemployed. It sounds like he sees what everyone's doing with their lives and he is just not content with possibly following that path. He is looking down from his apartment and he sees everyone walking to work and going to the bus or whatever the fuck they're doing and he says, not me. The song being titled Dry Spell could mean one of two things. It could mean a drought or it could mean a period of no productivity. Now, I'm thinking he is losing motivation into his craft. I'm thinking there's no money in it at this point because this is the earlier album. I think this is the second album he's put out. But it sounds like he has not found any success in his music at this point. And he is not looking forward to possibly having to revert back into the normal 9 to 5. And I don't think he has a skill set at this point. It's bliss, kiss, and pollution. And a billion suckers pucker in a bind. The line here that really sticks out to me in this section is where he says that the city is in a bottle. If you've ever seen a ship in a bottle, you would know that that's a piece of Art. You would have to build it from the outside in. Now, he says it like he is on the outside of the city, so I don't think he actually associates himself with its people. The line I don't understand here is, this splendors, shimmy splinters, all up in day tripper visuals. Take it easy, man. Fuck it, I'll take it any way I can. My palms are chin rusts. I don't understand what that means. He mentions, maybe the sunken ship is the treasure, but it's not. No, but they insist it, man. I'm trying to spin me dizzy, sponging up to giving dungeons functions. Okay, so I get part of this, and I don't really understand the other half. The sunken, maybe the sunken ship is the treasure is like an optimistic glasses half full way of saying, hey man, maybe the shitty part of life here is the whole reason we're, you know, supposed to be, in, like, this is what we're supposed to do. Maybe you should just shut the fuck up and enjoy life like the fucking rest of us and stop being such a little bitch. Trying to spin me dizzy, sponging up to giving dungeons functions. I think that just pertains to the previous line where he looks at the city as a dungeon where people are prisoners. And if you are in a dungeon, you would most likely be getting tortured. So I believe that he is getting tortured just existing in this city, which he is calling a dungeon. Now, if you're going to look at Exhibit A here, this is a true dungeon. Now, I live in Philadelphia. I do not think that this looks anything like Philadelphia. 
This, however, looks more like Philadelphia. But to giving something like that a function would mean to give it a purpose. As opposed to art historians absorbed inside assumptions, marveling at the spite with which it curdled. I don't understand. As opposed to art historians absorbed inside assumptions. That line, when I read that, my brain is telling me, I don't know how to word this correctly, so maybe I'm a dumbass, but when I read that, I'm thinking, historians will tell you what the painting symbolizes and what it means, but they were not actually there and alive to ask Bullshit. the artist himself or herself, Bullshit. what the fuck does this mean? Why did you paint this? What are you trying to get out? But they will make assumptions, and then they'll, they'll gloat that they know more than you. And it's probably not fucking true. I'm admitting right now, I do not fucking know, I know this language. I don't fucking know what he's talking about, but we're gonna try to figure it out, and this is what this is what I have you for. Everybody drop your knuckles when the style divorces vertical. So I had to think about this one for a while, but if you drop your knuckles, I used to think it was like fighting, but when the style divorces vertical. Divorcing means to separate, vertical would mean going up. So I'm thinking of a fountain, dropping your knuckles, cupping your hands. So you're probably trying to catch something. You're probably trying to catch some artistic vision. Maybe he's talking about inspiration. Marveling at the spite with which it curdled. This sounds like to me, he is getting inspiration from artwork that was probably made in rage or spite or angst marveling at the spite with which it curdled curdled would be in my opinion the way he's using it is something that has aged and probably aged poorly so he's probably this whole section this whole section sounds like he is talking about all the art pieces and all the songs and all the everything that you've seen past present and, and you know moving into the future that were inspired by other pieces of art that you can only imagine people made when they were angry and it possibly created something beautiful and even if it is depressing you could still admit that something depressing could also be beautiful from the mugs of the masons wasted laying bricks for days to later find they own the lot adjacent masonry so people who are bricklayers or i'm thinking freemasons um people who own buildings people who own lots and can build buildings who can afford to do that from out the mugs of masons wasted i'm thinking of buildings that are like demolished like kind of torn down you know they built it they, they they worked really hard on it and now they're just abandoned buildings but i'm also thinking laying bricks for days to later find they own the lot adjacent so maybe the same people abandoned a project and moved on to the next one and instead of just trying to revive it they let it die and they moved on to something else and kind of forgot it which i i admit i've done projects like that before where i've worked on something really really hard and then I just abandon it. I don't even talk about it. And it's something you, you could be so proud of. Mark the blasphemy, Elef elements of eloquence and savagery, murder the gossip, fuck it, run off happily. The, the broken spoke cyclers, choking open Dr. Zayas born fetus. Fuck that. You are out of your mind if you think I'm going to translate that. Murder the gossip sounds like something I, I, I went to a YouTube rabbit hole once. And I think this is what he's talking about. But there is a book of a party happening where this person who, I think it's a woman, and again, I don't even know what it's fucking called. I'm just rambling. This could be all something I dreamt. What it reminds me of is this woman at a party is a gossiper, and she won't shut the fuck up, and she actually dies after talking so much shit at this party that everyone is kind of like remiss, or not remiss, they're like fucking reluctant. That's the word I'm looking for, thank you. All these people are reluctant to solve her murder. And I think when they find out who the murderer is, they let him go because they don't really fucking care that she died. Like if that was the one victim, Fuck it. Can spoke cyclers choking open Dr. Zayas born fetus. Dr. Zayas was the born, um, he was the bad ape in Planet of the Apes. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Oh, Dr. Zayas. Do you ever read these lines? Do you ever look at these lyrics that he's putting up there and think, like, maybe he did a one draft right? Maybe he wrote it once went through his head and he just kept going and as he was freestyling in his head this is what came out and he goes fuck it it's staying in we're doing it live and other times i'm looking at these lines and i'm thinking we can dissect some of them and understand them and pick them apart but the big fucking kicker for me is i'm thinking some of them are only meant for him to understand i don't think we're supposed to get it i don't think it's wasteful i don't think it's like stupid but i think it is openly secretive it would be like walking around with a fucking lockbox and telling everyone that it's a secret in there but they can't look this is the first verse i don't even fucking get it and i'm not mad at it but i just don't understand now i'm drowning in a pool of why are you here severed ties with my beast of burden pertinent to if i die this year the word that 
throws people off here is pertinent. Pertinent would mean to be adjacent to, to, to directly connect to something. So the only way he could sever his ties with his beast of burden is if he were to fucking die. The cool part about this this chorus that I really enjoy is that every one of these statements is you could you could tie to an attribute of a person. So something like my name is dry spell could just be like what we talked about earlier about a period of non-productivity. My name is pill or something that people notice, something that is that stands above others, something that people have grown to expect. I wouldn't say grown to expect, but pillar would be just to stand above. Uh, my name's allegiance. My name is flagrant. My name's a thousand steps from patience, but I'm sick and tired of waiting. My name's Polaris. Polaris, if I'm not mistaken, is a star in the Big Dipper. My name is Canvas. My name's Low Life. My name's Intention. Okay, those three: Canvas, Low Life, Intention. So I, I love those three together. Canvas is something that you can write on and create something out of. I think people online have messed this one up because I did look into this a little. And what I'm getting out of this line particularly is that a lot of people think that as a canvas, he is something that creates. Wrong. If you were a canvas, you were something that people write on you paint on you are something that people just fucking abuse and they put shit all over you you do not create anything you are what's created on also that he put low life and intention next to each other and that could just be coincidental but typically the path to hell is paved with good intentions and typically people who are low lives at once i would assume had good intentions but you know i don't f f fucking <laughs> dummy over here my name is every imperfection that plays a part in my dissension carnival posture polarized in evidence carnivals what okay so we gotta d dissect this a little carnival is a place of enjoyment and it doesn't stay long i'm really just i'm blowing this off the fucking cuff this could be completely wrong carnivals are loud and fun and it draws people to them, but they do not stay long. My name is Posture. Posture to, to stand upright, or maybe it's it's just the way you, you hold yourself. Polarized to immediately have one decision without looking at the other, or it could be emotion-based. He could be always depressed and never happy. My name is Evidence. Evidence of what? Evidence of getting out of the city, evidence of moving into the city, evidence of being poor, rich, talented, loved, hated, like it could mean fucking everything. Delicate approach roped symmetrically to my fellowship. And you have my bow. What the fuck does he mean? My name's Possessive, Cordial, Igloo, Captivate. Contaminate the rich and clock their profits for the captive's sake. The first line and the last line I feel are contradictory. Possessive means to hold on to something, to, to not relinquish. Cordial would mean to be polite and upstanding, good manners, respectable. Uh, my name is Igloo, something that is cool, something that keeps the cold out. Maybe it's just a shell. My name is Captivate. Captivate people, captivate audience, captivate ideas. And the last line, which throws me off is, my name is Contaminate the Rich and Clock They Profits for the Captive's Sake. So steal from the rich to give to the poor. But if you are possessive, you would not give anything up. That does not make sense to me. So why are those two lines together? They're, they're, they're damn close. They are damn close. Don't tell me they're not together. The three or four lines apart, but still, they're fucking next to each other. Circle of sandbags, drag the Shield the meal, the needy hand grabs. Letting hopes to your local acropolis. Opulence in the cockpit, not the pocket for them born with a pebble toss sunk to rest. While they've exhausted the art of drug and address. Red. Exhibit fracture lines that converge towards where the hackers whine. When trappers slack the traps unlatched to catch cover this tracking line. Battle makers, majesty furious. Oh, bury his head and how could I have been so dense if only? Yeah, but I'm lonely. My days graze normalcy, then morbidly crash. My eaves breathe honesty, then sardonically laugh. Alas, I dig my toes into the sand and Spit foliage out my lips for sign of fine mankind's end all aspirations. Hope flow. No hope sinks like broken boats and most are asked before provoked. I'm tossing darts at a map of the arts to pick up where you choked. And when the last leaf falls off the branches of resonance, I'll be waiting with my butterfly net to collect the evidence. Well, I am a room with poison oak scaling the sides. or actions on the ceiling. Rug of thumbtacks, bones of rusty pipes. If you can squeeze between the bars, enjoy my space, employ my waste. 
chase the hand dealt by a stolen grace. Now, yeah, you ever I wish the circle was a square so when land sharks start circling the borders, you could just cut them off at the corners? There's a ghost in a basket of values pertinent to which kayak pilot succeed in surfing it through. Yes, now I'm surfing it through. So if you need me, spread your wings to spell my name above the mess near the other funny requests. See, mild to tolerant mannerisms of hire the whim to assist in a meticulous pick apart of cobweb from skins of innocence. Child of timid instinct with that ten step ahead premise. Slide dust bowls before the zephyr was requested. A mile in humble shoes, ten shades of blues come off the difference. I grimace took me one eye blink to conclude that simply is. My name is dry. My name is Circle of sandbags dragged to shield the meal the needy hand grabs. Could this whole song be about greed and being depressed because you see how greedy people like the rich get richer and the poor stay poor? Could this be like a like a like a an audible illustration of the emotion of why people don't work? Once I put it into that perspective, all of this starts to make sense. Circle of sandbags dragged to shield the meal the needy hand grabs. Someone needs it people are defending it. Splitting hopes at your local Acropolis. Acropolis was a Greek city that was, uh, I think it was just overrun with weak infrastructure. Again, I'm terrible at history. Weak infrastructure, wars, and I think they had a sickness going on, but I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Opulence in a cockpit, not the pocket for them born with a pebble toss. I don't know what op opulence means. Exhibit fracture lines that converge where converge towards where the hackers want. I don't understand these lines. There's the problem with this shit right here is I don't understand the context correctly. Born with a pebble toss. What the fuck, man? I don't know what the fuck that means. Sunk to rest while they've exhausted the art of drunken address. Don't know what you mean. The hackers whine. Who the fuck are the hackers? Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, oh, hold up, hold up. Could this be maybe just him talking about if you are born with a silver spoon in your mouth, could you just not be happy? Could that be what, what the hackers whine is? Maybe they hack the system? When trappers slack, the traps unlatch. The catch covers the tracking lines, buries his head, and how could I have been so dense? Huh. I think if you're not on your game and you're not consistently trying to get better at hunting, you will never catch. I think that's what he's talking is. The second he lets the dry spell take effect, I think he's donezo, you know? But we know this is a 30 year old song almost, I think. I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's fucking giving up. <laughs> My days graze normalcy, then morbidly crash. My years breathe honesty, then sardonically laugh. It sounds like he would just get depressed. And my years breathe honesty, then sardonically laugh. It's not sarcastic, but it's like hopeless. It's a hopeless laugh. The way I receive this, the way I'm reading this, it sounds like he is being truthful. He went around the right path. He was honest. He was honorable. And he is miserable because of how honesty, uh, uh, how admirable he was trying to be. But the way I, I, the way I see this verse in my head is he is writing this from, and this is my imagination running wild but i see him in my head writing the songs and the message in like a classroom somewhere that's empty and on the outside of that it's filled with like briar patch and fucking poison ivy like he said and it, it's really difficult to get close to him you could not get to him by just walking there you would have to suffer you would have to physically throw yourself into you know the pain the suffering to understand what the fuck is going on in his head. He says, if you can squeeze between the bars, then please. And it's cool because everything he's trying to give us has meaning behind it. It's not just constant regurgitation of the same song. You know what I mean? Enjoy my space, employ my waste. The problem is who would want to if everything about what you're doing is so horrible. I, I'm thinking no one in the right mind would just jump into that fucking pit. So why would they do it? And the only thing I can think of is if they are already mentally famined. When I think of this song, and I'm being very, very broad here. When I think of this song, I'm thinking he does not want to work a nine to five in a white collar life. Outside of this, I'm a blue collar guy. I'm a plumber, but I enjoy it. It's not a job that I was forced into, but I also like doing this. So I'm thinking he can't figure out how to split the ends. This section of the song here speaks to me in a way that says, Aesop understands that you gotta be thinking 
like a predator. Like you always have to be steps ahead of everyone else. But he has a good heart about it. So he's not trying to take advantage of people. It sounds like he's trying to use the skill that we always stigmatize as evil, but use it for good. When he says he supplies the Dust Bowl before the Zephyr was requested, I always thought a Zephyr was a bird and I thought a Zeppelin was a was a balloon. And maybe that's, maybe there is a balloon to transport people to escort them to extract them from a dust bowl a dust bowl would be a place where there is a dry spell where you cannot grow anything where you cannot produce anything a mile in humble shoes 10 shades of blues comes off the difference i grimace took me one hour's blink to conclude there simply isn't grimace is just a disgusting face and a mile in humble shoes 10 shades of blues comes off the difference and a one hour's blink like a nap did he fucking nap to conclude there simply isn't. So there is no difference between humbleness and blues. Unless you are absolutely fucking egotistical, you're probably gonna be you're probably gonna be sad. You know, maybe you do have to be egotistical. Maybe you do have to be kind of a nut to fucking be happy, you know? If you're too humble, will you be sad? Will you be depressed? Guys, I need to know what the fuck is he talking about? Why would you even request this song? Do you even know what you put me through? Look at this. Look at this. I don't- I don't know! I don't know! I don't fuck- uh, what the fuck- Now, we do gotta finish the song, and it does just go into the chorus again. He adds this extra section here, right here. Cynical, tolerance, hallucinogen, waterfall, runaway, and alarm clock. Is there any way we can tie them together? Probably, and also probably fucking not. <laughs> Vagabond and Angel being next to each other. A Vagabond is like a homeless person and an angel. So when I think of that, I think what if God was one of us? My name is Century. My name is Hunter. My name is Sunburst. My name is Wildfire. Could Sunburst and Wildfire have anything to do with it? Could it be like could it be like saying that something that you are is beautiful but also dangerous? Like it it causes more harm than good. And then after that, scrutinize basic cigarettes. Are these still just pillars? Are these still just traits? Is there a reason why we added these ones at the end? The two that make sense to go next to each other for me are cynical and tolerance. If you're cynical, you believe that everyone is out for themselves, but tolerance would be that you put up with what's in front of you. You put up with people and their shit. I am tolerant. I am not accepting. I don't fucking care about everything going on. All I give a shit about right now, Risk of Rain 2 and fucking, you know, hoping Overwatch fixes itself, but it's probably not going to happen. And then also this. He uses a hallucinogen after that and that could be another way of tolerating is by using drugs and then waterfall runaway alarm clock <sighs> that could just be a dream he had and alarm clock would be the thing that woke him up out of the dry spell or woke him up out of the dream maybe this whole song is a dream maybe he is not in a dry spell maybe this is a fear maybe this is a fear of being in the dry spell so fucking guys i would love to know what you think and let me know in the comments fucking go line by line tell me what you think i read the comments i don't give a shit um please i would like to enjoy the song a little more and i would definitely know how to if someone could define opulence for me please like and subscribe i'll see you in the next video